Hello and welcome to How Not to Write a Novel. Today I've been doing a very good job of not writing a novel. I've been for an interesting walk, at least. Um, however, I have written more words than I did yesterday. I've written a couple of paragraphs today. I've just got into Brannigan meeting the first two members of the team. Introducing him, giving a short description of what he looks like. And he want, as an ex-military guy, he wants to know if he needs to address them by rank, if he needs to call somebody sir, who's the leader. Um, Aaron mumbles, doesn't know how to answer. Daryl steps in straight away. Squad of specialists, Daryl fielded the question as he rounded the table again to sit behind, beside Aaron. Different backgrounds and different gifts. We usually defer to the member with the most relevant experience. In the case of a disagreement on strategy or logistics, I effectively have the casting vote, but I don't micromanage. I expect this is very different from your military experience, but I understand you've been employed by groups with a less structured chain of command in the intervening years. Very good, sir. He nodded and pulled up a seat on the other side of the table. Then I assume I won't need to address you by rank. And I think that works pretty well, because first off it shows that Dutch still thinks like a member of the military. He's looking for a chain of command, even though he knows there's a good chance there won't be one. He can adapt. And also it gives us a description of how the squad works without having to add more exposition. I mean, it's still there, but one character saying it to a Another is slightly better, as long as they can keep it short and to the point. However, at the same time as I was working on that, I've also been thinking about Dutch's first encounter with the Unnaturals. Um, which um, I guess is a little off topic because it probably won't be relevant, won't be mentioned. However, I have this idea in my mind and I don't want it to go to waste. So I've quickly written it out. When he was in the military, Dutch came across a group of unnaturals called Sandmasters. They're one of the rarer types and they generally only live in the desert. I've put a page about them on the wiki. The idea being that they can do anything with sand. So they can make themselves houses by shaping sand. They can create living sandstorms to attack people with and stuff like that, which means they are quite powerful, but only within a specific area. And they have to have sand. Um, their weakness is they have no imagination. They can only create things that they've actually seen before, unless there's a human there to imagine it for them. So they tend to make contact with people who are lost in the desert, taking them to some, you know, um, Oasis Paradise, this palace in the middle of all the sand. And they're taking it from the imagination of the people they're showing. The people they run into are actually supplying the images. But, you know, they often don't know this. A sandmaster can actually feed on the imagination of humans. But unlike the shadow drinkers, the imagination is effectively an unlimited resource. Um, you can keep on imagining more things. So they can happily feed on the same person's imagination effectively indefinitely, as long as the person is willing to stay. And you're lost in the desert and then you come across an oasis with this huge palace here, luxury, the greatest banquets, everything's perfect, a lot of people will stay as long as they can. The problem is that the banquet is only nourishing to the Sandmaster. To everybody else, it tastes like food, uh, the wine refreshes you, you feel like you've eaten, but you're actually just eating sand and it doesn't have any nutritional value. So people will tend to starve to death after visiting a Sandmaster because they feel like they've eaten when they've actually had nothing with nutritional value. 
the um, wine is also fine dry sand but it tastes like wine and you feel refreshed so it, it basically makes you not notice that you're dying the same would be true if an injured person was rescued by them and had imaginary um, medical care it would stop your wounds from hurting but it wouldn't actually make them better and I think that's an interesting way to do it. They don't actually directly hurt anybody. All they do is provide illusion. It's kind of a trick. But um, anyway, that's about all I've come up with today. Um, I'll try to write late, more later. If you want to have a look at what I've written, then there will be a link down there in the description. You should be able to comment on the document. If you can't, then please let me know. Um, there's also a comment space down there that you can use to comment on the video. Please do. Um, this is how I know that people are watching me. And after this one, if I've done the next video yet, then there should be a link up here. And if you haven't seen the last video yet, there should be a link up here. If you don't want to watch any of those, then bye for now.